Number 11. Arrange each of the following sets of compounds in order of increasing boiling point temperature. And then we have O2, NO, and N2. All right. So especially if they give you covalent molecules, which are molecules that contain only nonmetals, which are the three here, oxygen and nitrogen are both nonmetals, and they're asking you to rank uh, via increasing boiling point or decreasing boiling point. The idea here is boiling point. Just know that they're secretly trying to make you list out the intermolecular forces that these molecules have. So by them just saying to rank them by boiling point, I know that I have to see what intermolecular forces are here. Because the more intermolecular forces that you pick up, the higher the boiling point. So let's see. Now in order to find the intermolecular forces, Chances are, the easiest way to do this is to just draw the Lewis structures. I know that it's one more step, but it will help you visualize what's going on, and it will just reduce the amount of mistakes that you make. Um, but as you get better with your Lewis structures, you will be able to visualize these in your mind. So I'm just going to put them on the page for now, just for you to see it. But as you get more practice, everything's going to be, you know, going in, in the mind. So let's just put them down, right? So I have O2, NO, and N2. Now, this will be like a refresher of Lewis structures. There's tons of videos on this channel just designated to helping you draw Lewis structures. So pause the video if you need to and try to write them out and see if your answer matches mine. So O2 is going to be an oxygen that is double bound with another oxygen, and it's got two lone pairs on uh, both sides. Cool. Nitrogen is going to be double bound to oxygen. The oxygen is still going to have the two lone pairs and the nitrogen is not going to have an octet because there's no charges here. Uh, so we have to keep nitrogen as having the seven valence electrons. And then N2 here has nitrogen triple bound to another nitrogen and it's got one lone pair. Okay, beautiful. So now from these, we can figure out how many intermolecular forces these molecules have. So we're going to start from the most basic to the most specific. Now dispersion forces have a lot of different names. Dispersion forces are also known as London forces. They're also known as Van der Waal forces. They all mean the same. In this case, I'm just going to use the word dispersion. But just know that for all of those names, all compounds and all molecules have this force. So it doesn't matter if you're polar or nonpolar or even ionic, you're all going to have dispersion forces. So that's a gimme. So dispersion it up. Dispersion for O2, dispersion for NO, and dispersion for N2. These are your temporary dipoles, uh, in which are not permanent. They're, they're because of instantaneous dipoles, but just know that they all have them. Now, dipole-dipole attractions, only polar covalent molecules have this force. So the key thing is, is now figuring out, is your molecule polar or is it nonpolar? And remember the acronym SNAP. I love the acronym SNAP. It helps a lot. So the N and the P, and maybe I think I'm a little bit too generous on this side. Okay, that's good enough, maybe. I think that's good. Now the N and the P stand for nonpolar and polar. The S and the N go together and the A and the P go together. If you were nonpolar, your whole molecule would be symmetrical. So maybe I'll just have, you know, have symmetry or symmetrical. So you're looking for a nice symmetrical look to it. But if your molecule is polar, you have a symmetricalness around it. So I'll just put asymmetry here. So basically, since we're trying to solve, or not solve for, but we're trying to look for dipole-dipole attractions, those are your polar molecules, which means that you will have a symmetry, or it's not going to look the same on both sides. 
So for example, if we look at O2 and we cut that molecule right down the center, I have one oxygen on the left side and one oxygen on the right side. That's pretty symmetrical to me. So this would be classified as a nonpolar molecule. But if I look at NO and I break this down the middle, I got a nitrogen on the left and an oxygen on the right. Those are two different elements. That's asymmetrical. It is not the same. So since this is classified as a polar molecule, you can add dis you know dipole-dipole attraction to the list. Going to N2, if I break that triple bond, I just look at it from the left and the right side, there are two nitrogens. So they're exactly the same. So this would be also classified as nonpolar, just like the O2. And because it's nonpolar, you do not have dipole-dipole attractions. And then the last bond is the hydrogen bond, which is technically a force. It's not an actual bond. But these have to have hydrogens. And those hydrogens have to be bound by either a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. But in this case, I see no hydrogens. So there's no possible way to have um, a hydrogen bond. Now just know that the more intermolecular forces that you pick up, the higher the boiling point. So technically, O2 has one intermolecular force. I'll just title it as intermolecular force, IMF. NO has two intermolecular forces, and N2 has one intermolecular force. So on my list of highest boiling point, and I'm just going to label it as BP, and lowest boiling point, we want it as increasing boiling point, which means that you should start with the lowest and end with your highest. The highest boiling point would be the one in which you collected more intermolecular forces, so the twoer. So NO would be the highest boiling point. But now since these have the same, they just have dispersion, how am I going to tell the difference? Well, if you just have dispersion, and you want to be able to determine who has a higher boiling point, just know that the higher boiling point always comes from the higher molecular mass or molar mass. doesn't matter what form you use it, but just know that it's the mass that's on the periodic table. So find out what the whole mass of O2 is. On the periodic table, each oxygen is 16. So you're looking at roughly 32 AMU, 16 times 2, right? That's going way back to basics. And then N2, each nitrogen is roughly about 14, so this would weigh about 28 AMU. The higher one has the higher boiling point. So out of these two that only had dispersion, this one, O2, must have a higher boiling point than N2. So therefore, the next runner-up would be O2 in the middle, and N2 would have the lowest boiling point because it has the lower mass. And then since we're ranking from low to high, I have to show this less than sign. And now I'm good to go. Let's box this off and call it a video. Oh, yeah. Beautiful coloring, if I don't say so myself. And we're done. Okay, so what do you think? Hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep working hard. Always keep learning, and check the channel out. We also have physics and math videos on the channel to help you out. And yeah, go have a blast. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.